Hi, it's Kelly here, and I want to tell you about uh, a comment I made on the Houston Chronicle online and how I got 28 votes out of 30 disliked what I wrote. And I'd like to tell you about that. It's pretty amazing. Um, by the way, I'm the author of this book here, The Doctor Cures Cancer. There's the book translated into Russian, they tell me. Uh, this is my invention over here, an early, early uh, version called the, uh, the Whirling Bliss Machine. I was the founder of Sinus Magic over here. I'm also the inventor of the Heartfelt Energizer and the Baby Heartfelt Energizer. So here's the deal. I was writing about about uh, that thing that ever has got the whole world on shutdown, right? And I pointed out something that seems like very few people have thought about it, particularly at least 28 out of 30 people. And I said, you know, viruses and your cells walls are both negatively charged. And I learned in high school chemistry that when they, you have two negatives, they repel each other. So my question was, how, how does that virus get inside the cell if they're both negatively charged? And the answer is they don't. They're repelled. That's why 380 trillion of them are circulating in our body, but they are not bothering us. If that wasn't the case, we would be getting the flu every second or, or more often. So this is a new way of looking at things to a lot of people because we all consider the virus is to be contagious. And so we got to square that. We got to ask ourselves, well, if something is contagious, how, how does that contagion work if our bodies repel all the viruses? It seems like they would only be contagious if, our, if the cell membrane was not negatively charged. And of course, that happens on occasion, not very often, because once again, you know, even if you get the flu once a year, it's still not happening all the other days and seconds of, of, of the year, right? So, but the, 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 the vote downs of 28 to 2, which is 15 to 1, basically 14 to 1, is basically telling us where people's heads are at. That they have what I would call professor-itis. That professor-itis means that if you are taught something and it's lodged in there to the point where you're unable to accept new information that contradicts the old information, you've got professor-itis. It's not against the professor, it's against the process that we have of locking things in. This is the state that we're at right now, apparently, at least in this small sampling, that 14 out of 15 people are rejecting this simple, irrefutable argument because it's in the it's in the textbooks that negatives repel negatives, and it's widely known among scientists that viruses are negatively charged, as are our cell walls. These are three facts that can't be. I mean, you can contradict them, but they're not. You know, it's true. So, in every case, see. The, the charges don't make an exception for your cell walls. They, oh, we can go in anyway. That's not the case. So what we have to do inside is say, well, gosh, that must be wrong because, because the professors kept saying this was true, <clears throat> and then it was reported to us on TV, so that made it true, even though it turns out that it's not true. It's very important that we make this distinction because... If what I'm saying is true, and we can check it out, let's, let's have a discussion about it, see if it's accurate or not. If what I'm saying is true, then that means that wearing masks is a waste of time, and so is cleaning, and so is buying uh, hand sanitizers and paper towels and rubber gloves and, and bleach and you know the, all that stuff, and we're spending hours and hours trying to keep things clean and, and having our kids stay home from school. And, and shutting down businesses and putting them out of business so that people don't have an income, so they don't have money to buy groceries. And this is tr true in a lot of cases around the country. People are having to go to food banks to get food. They've never had to do that before. And this could get worse because 
what lowers the cell membranes, two things. One is a poor diet. We need to increase our omega-3s, and that will help to some degree. However, we also have an assault on our body going on right now from all of the Wi-Fi that we're using and the increasing amounts of 5G that are, that are operating. Those, those two things produce pulsed waves. Pulsed waves interfere with the normal electrical function of our body. We receive electrical pulse or fractional waves from the sun. They're electromagnetic fields from the sun and from the stars even. And they are the kind of waves that agree with us. Just like music is fractal sound waves. Fractal just means fraction. You know, they're irregular. You know, one note is this high and the other one's that high. Or a mountain is this high and the next one to it is this high. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's not a duplicate. It's not pulsed like an alarm clock. And as I've mentioned before, if you've heard me say this, and I've said it many times, in our body we have musical instruments. They're called microtubules. And those microtubules organize our DNA through voltage. That's an electrical process. The microtubules, I call them flutes, biological flutes, because they have like little finger things that run back and forth on them to play it on this coiled microtubule. It's an electric flute. And scientists know, or are aware, that this voltage is what allows the DNA to connect to itself so it can be in a long string. If you are playing a flute and someone's tapping on you on your flute 25 billion times a second, what is likely to happen? You might miss a note. You might miss two notes. And as I've said before, if we were in Carnegie Hall and you were playing your flute, then you were bringing a tear to the people's eyes, even in, up in the rafters. And all of a sudden you hit a wrong note, and another one, another one, the tears would go, get sucked back up into the eyes, and we'd go, <gasps> like that. It would just be really harsh. Well, that's what happens with the microtubules, with the electronic pulsing that goes through our bodies. Something would say it only goes through this, you know, on a very superficial area. So let's say it only happens on your skin. Do you think that's a good idea to have your skin not functioning the way that it's supposed to? Now, scientists have also discovered that the sweat glands have a little helical antenna. It's a, sw a swirly, you know, antenna like a like a, one of those soft swirl ice cream cones. And those antennas take the waves and send it deep into our bodies. So whether you want to believe it's just on the surface of your skin or going deeper in your body, it's disturbing the microtubules. It cannot be good for us to have our skin reacting that way or deeper into our body that way. So if we want to end this fear, we just realize that we can't catch the flu from anybody. It's just a matter of keeping our, keeping our membrane potential up keeping the cell walls functioning higher. And the way to do that is through my inventions, for example. They, they raise uh, your, your um, cell membrane, your cell, the membrane potential. Um, that's one way. The other way is to shut off the 5G for sure. And, uh, you know, don't use your cell phone so much. I, I don't use a cell phone at all. I have a metal rod in my back that's an antenna. And so I'm particularly susceptible to it. Uh, one time I had a phone charging and my ankle turned to ice for three hours. And then the moment I unplugged it, within a minute, my ankle returned to normal temperature. So I, I have a personal experience with the effects of antennas. So if we, the important thing here is to share this information because, because we've got to stop this whole process of shutting down the world. We cannot function this way. And once we realize that it is unnecessary and ineffective to wear masks, because the masks do nothing for the 380 trillion viruses in our body, it will react to cells that have lower membrane potential. Long before the sneeze or the snot from someone else gets in your body, the viruses that are in you already will infect you like that. 
and it can happen just because you walk in the wrong place at the wrong time and that 5G stuff is going into you and you get it or the 4G, the, the Wi-Fi, whatever it is. So if we share this video, we'll get this word out to more people and, and we can solve this problem and we can return back to normal. Then you can talk about whether or not, not my inventions do, that, do the job for you or not. That's fine. I understand that part of it. And, but in the meantime, if we can get the masks off and go back to work and do our thing and realize that our sickness is caused by not enough omega-3s to raise our membrane potential. That's, the, that's what worked in the old days and still works to a certain extent today. And the bombardment that we have of the waves going through. It's just like, you know, we've known for a long time that radio waves go through us because if you stand in the wrong place when a radio is playing, you're going to hear static. And that, those radio waves are going through you. All right? And that's why that happens. So it's the same thing. It's going through us. It's invisible. We don't see it, so we don't we don't give it much thought. But they are there, and that's why your phone works when you're talking to somebody because those waves are going through the walls of your house or your office or, or your car or wherever you are. So it's these are these are basic things that, that we know and we just haven't processed. We haven't connected the dots. If you connect the dots, it's really easy. You see why this sickness is increasing and it continuing to increase. And I guarantee you it will continue to increase more this winter than it did last winter. And, and will continue to increase and increase and increase until we get to the bottom of it. And wearing a mask does zero. It does less than zero. Babies and children are getting rashes around their mouths and things like that. You know, it's not a good idea. So, well, I've gone on for quite some time. I don't have my glasses on. It looks like 12 minutes. Oh, my God. Can I talk? <laughs> yes. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, share the video because that's how we get this information out there and everybody gets better. You take care. God bless.